So this afternoon I have chosen to speak about something very interesting because the whole world is going through difficulty and hardship. Actually, even those who perhaps have seen days of ease in the past are going through some form of difficulty, calamity, hardship, sickness, disease, loss, whatever else it may be. Now, you need to ask yourself a question. We speak about the broken hearted, someone who's broken hearted. Did you know that Allah says in a hadith Qudsi, I am with the broken hearted. If someone is broken hearted, do you know that Allah is with that person? If you are broken hearted, Allah is with you. Did you know that when you are broken hearted, the angels are saying Ameen to any dua that you make? So don't say the bad words, the F's and the B's and, and the S and H's and so on. Don't say that because the angels are saying Ameen. If you were to say a good dua at a time of hardship and difficulty and when calamity strikes, you stand a better chance of goodness in the dunya and the akhirah. Then if you were to swear, become angry, become upset, start questioning Allah, Allah is in control from the very beginning. He knows and, and he, he knows you and I and he knows what we're going through and what we will be going through. May Allah make it easy. So regarding the broken hearted, the first question you need to ask yourself is not about you. It's about someone else. When they are broken hearted, what role have you played to break their heart? Did you hear what I just said? Many people are sitting saying, oh, I'm broken hearted. But how many hearts have you broken? Subhanallah. And when I say how many hearts have you broken? I'm not talking of love stories here. We're talking of how difficult have you made the lives of others? Some of us are rotten when it comes to our character. Astaghfirullah. Some of us misbehave. Some of us, the way we speak to others is very rude. We don't make life easy for them. Do you think Allah is going to make life easy for you? Allah will continue to help a slave for as long as that slave continues to help another. The opposite is true. When you make someone's life difficult, don't think that your life is going to be made any easy. No matter how powerful you are, no matter who you are, it is going to come for you. We've always said that. My brothers, my sisters, the broken hearted. Number one, you need to ask yourself, have I been a culprit when it comes to hurting people's feelings, when it comes to slandering, when it comes to accusing, when it comes to bad mouthing? That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Nabi Muhammad وسلم, as the total opposite of that. Indeed, you are upon a very great level of character and conduct, the greatest in fact. Which means the development of character and conduct would actually make you not only follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, but earn Jannatul Firdaus. There are people who get Jannah because of the humbleness, the humility, the way they carry themselves, the way they respect everybody, no matter who they are. You see a child today, that child may be someone very important tomorrow. You don't know. Whether they are going to be or not, it's still important for you to greet them in a correct way. The Prophet ﷺ used to take his time to greet the broken hearted, to greet the young, to greet those who were downtrodden. In fact, Allah Almighty instructed him. Allahu Akbar. Do you know the history of that verse? When the kuffar of Quraysh and the cronies and the big and the rich and the powerful were telling Muhammad sallallahu to chase away the poor, the downtrodden, the ex-slaves and so on, Allah Almighty revealed verses. Don't ever chase away these people who are calling out to Allah by day and by night, in the morning and in the evening. Don't chase them away. Bilal ibn Rabah, Salman al-Farisi, whoever else it may be. Don't chase these people away. Khabbab ibn al-Arat radiyallahu an. So Allah says, they are telling you, chase these away. These are believers. They call out to us. They are our friends. You cannot chase them away. A rich man cannot say, I'm not going to mix with these. I'm not going to mix in this society because they are all poor. 
poverty has got nothing to do with material wealth. In the eyes of Allah, a poor person is the one who does not have a relationship with Allah, no matter how much money you have. And a wealthy person is, a, is the one who has a beautiful relationship with Allah, no matter how little they might have materially. So Allah says, and that was the first verse I read, Allah says, when the believers come to you, speaking about whom? Speaking about these broken hearted, downtrodden, those who were downtrodden, those who were looked down upon by society and community, when they come to you, you must greet them aloud. Tell them, Assalamu Alaikum, Fakul Salamun Alaikum, Subhanallah. Greet them, give them importance. Do you know why? You mend the heart, you heal the heart, you build them, you empower them. Subhanallah. You give them the contentment. They, they realize that, you know what? I'm also a worshiper of Allah. Here is someone acknowledging that I belong to Allah, just like they do. La ilaha illallah. Give people importance. Talk to them. Acknowledge them. Give them a good word. Mending the broken heart is the job of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah himself has said so many words in the Quran mending the hearts of those who were broken hearted who were sad those who didn't have much and even at the time of Nabi sallam when he went through hardship Allah gave him beautiful words why look at the books of tafsir they will say this verse was revealed Tasliyatan lin Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to strengthen the Prophet sallam, to give him goodness when he was saddened by the words of the kuffar of Quraysh. He was working hard. He used to do so much for the sake of Allah. He was honest. He was pure. He was sincere and genuine. Still they mocked. They scoffed. They called him names. They said he's after money. He's after power. He's after women. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ نَعْلَمُ إِنَّهُ لَيَحْزُنُكَ الَّذِي يَقُولُونَ فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يُكَذِّبُونَكَ Allah says, we know that you are saddened by the bad words that they are saying. We want you to know they are not belying you. Do you know what? They know the truth. They, these are arrogant people. لَكِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ يَجَحَدُونَ They are deniers of the truth when they know it's the truth. عَرَفُوا الْحَقَّ وَتَرَكُوا They realized and knew and recognized the truth, but they left it. Let's not be from among those. We know the truth, right? Fulfill your duty unto Allah. You will never mend your heart if your duties unto Allah are not fulfilled. It's impossible. Your duty unto Allah is the primary foundation stone of the mending of the broken heart that you have. Subhanallah. How can you say, I have a broken heart when your salah is not in order? How can you say, I have a broken heart when you don't read the Quran? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبُ Indeed, the true believers, they find the comfort of the heart in the remembrance of Allah. For indeed, it is only the remembrance of Allah that will comfort the heart. It will mend the broken heart. It will heal your broken heart. What is it? The remembrance of Allah. What is that? Starting with the Quran, it's afdalu dhikr, tilawatul Quran. The best of dhikr, recite the Quran. How many khatam do you do? How many times do you complete the Quran? What relationship do you have on a daily basis with the Quran? Oh, I don't. Well, how do you want your heart to heal? La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. You want your heart to heal. Our duty is to help others heal their hearts. How are we going to do that when our own hearts are dilly dally everywhere? May Allah grant us comfort of the heart. Another way of mending your heart, stay away from sin. For indeed, when you involve in that which displeases Allah, your heart will be broken. Now we get to the love stories, right? When someone has an illicit relationship, it is the finest ingredient of the breakage of your heart. You put it all in the pot yourself. Now in the pot and the cauldron is bubbling. Whose fault is it? You say, why did Allah do this to me? Ooh, you're blaming Allah for your own adultery. You're blaming Allah for your sin. You're blaming Allah for developing a wrong relationship, for giving away your heart to someone besides Allah. When Allah told you not to do that, but still Allah says, we love you. Just come back to us. It will take a time to mend and to heal. Start with your salah, dress modestly, relationship with Allah through dhikr and Quran leave sin, obey your parents and fulfill their wishes and try your best to actually serve them. Look at how you'll get contentment.
what is so important about a parent? Why? Why does Allah say parents, parents? Some of our parents are, subhanAllah, quite difficult. Allah says, be respectful and kind. When they ask you to do something wrong, you don't have to do it. But still be respectful and kind. There is no excuse. Why? Because who created you? Who created you? Say it. Allah. Allah created you. Who did he choose in order to bring you onto this earth? Is it not your parents? Haqqan. So therefore you've got to be good to your parents because Allah chose them to put you here. Did you choose them? No. It's part of your test. Love your father and your mother. No matter what. You love them. You might not like some of their habits if they are perhaps not Muslim or perhaps they are transgressing themselves. But does that mean you don't love them? You love them. That's your father. That's your mother. They might have bad habits. Yes, you don't like the bad habits. Sometimes some parents are so abusive that we need to stay away from them. Stay away respectfully in a kind way. Still once in a while make dua for them. Pray for them. Subhanallah. Another way of mending your heart. Help those who are in trouble and in need and Allah will help you. And in one narration, dunya wal akhirah. When you help someone and alleviate their suffering for them, Allah will alleviate your suffering on the day of Qiyamah. Imagine you being called out. Fayunadi munadin. Call a calling on the day of Qiyamah. Where are the ones who helped alleviate the suffering of others on earth today? We are going to help alleviate their suffering. Who wants success on the day of Qiyamah? Wallahi, my beloved brothers and sisters in this world, we will all struggle. We will all suffer. Allah inna lil la sakarat. Indeed, death has pangs. You know what are pangs of death? When you are about to die and there is a gargara and you feel very uneasy and perhaps hot and you get these flushes and you feel now I can't breathe anymore and it's the last few moments and suddenly drop. Allahu Akbar, a believer dies with shahada at least in his heart and better still on his tongue as well as the heart so those pangs of death they are a struggle but after that there is no suffering for a believer you get jannatul firdaus you forget what happened in the past many of us today we are sitting mashallah in a better position we have better homes better clothes better food you have forgotten where you were 20 years ago 10 years ago where you were you have forgotten right and it's become some new life. And now when something goes wrong of a smaller nature, we tend to suffer because we've been accustomed to something new. Let me give you one quick example. You buy your first car. Before that, what did you used to use? Public transport, right? When you buy your first car, you feel like a king. Even though your car is just a Honda Fit, mashallah. You feel like a king because it's your first car. When when that car after a year develops a puncture or something goes wrong and you can't use it for one week, what happens? You find it so difficult to go back to public transport. But my brother, all your life you were using public transport. Why? Because now how can I from king? I'm no longer king. You know, one week. Allah says, you know what? It's man. Man is accustomed to something. Then he becomes very, you know, difficult for him to actually go back. Thank Allah. Remember where you were. There was a young man saying, you know, when I was young, I used to say, oh Allah, help me so I can buy my own house. He says, now I'm 50 years old. I bought my own house, but I'm asking Allah for more and more and more and more. Subhanallah, ask Allah Jannah. A way of healing your heart is to look at the stories of others who have struggled. Read the seerah of Muhammad Sallallahu It will mend your heart. When you see the struggles he went through and you tell yourself, this is Afdalul Khalqi wa Akramul Rusuli, the best of creation, the most honored of all messengers of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah bless them all and have mercy on them. And then you tell yourself, he went through struggles, they did not have food for how long? They were, there was a boycott against them for three years, they didn't have food. Aisha radiallahu anha, she says, in kunna ala Muhammad. Even though we were the family of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We used to see the moon and another moon and another moon. And there was no food in this house except for water and dates. That means three months. Okay, guys, are we all ready to spend three months with only water and dates? Ready? Ready? Not a single hand. You're laughing at me. You know why? Allah only tests those whom he loves. La ilaha illallah. When he loves you, you have a test. And only a true believer understands that. 
when I have an examination question that is very difficult and I know the answer, I am a true PhD holder. I have a degree higher than yours. You know why? I knew all the answers. All those exams, I aced them. That's the word. So Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu he had the greatest of tests. Very difficult. Inna Allah idha ahabba abda nibtalahu. When Allah loves his slave, he tests him. My beloved brothers and sisters who are broken hearted, turn to Allah. Nobody can mend your heart. The people around you might try and make it worse when you are with Allah and Allah alone. Then even the pain becomes sweet. It becomes sweet. Learn to love Allah. Learn to turn towards Allah. Material items will never give you joy. So many people have so much in terms of wealth. Wallahi, they cannot sleep. They are struggling with anxiety and sleeping pills. And with the sleeping pills, they still cannot sleep. May Allah grant us good sleep. Some of us snore so much that we disturb the whole house. Subhanallah. If only they knew. May Allah grant us goodness. I'm so happy to be here and to be given this opportunity to address you on this Jumu'ah, the blessed day of Friday in this beautiful masjid. When I passed here and I was entering, I thought to myself, this place is empty. Perhaps the people are still going to come. As I walked in, I was surprised to see, mashallah, the masjid was full. Everyone was waiting. May Allah grant us Jannah without reckoning. May Allah make us from those who love each other fi sabilihi, for his sake alone. Make life easy for one another. Respect people. Allah will grant you respect on earth. No matter who it is. Greet them at least. Do you know we are lacking one thing in the ummah today, which is simple greeting. Assalamu alaikum. Even from a distance. Assalamu alaikum. And at least smile. At least nowadays, you, you know, you smile with your eyes. When they see their eyes going this way, that way, they know they are smiling. The women in niqab already knew that a long time ago, but Allah wanted all of us to test it out for his own wisdom. So my beloved brothers, I tell you once again, don't make someone else's life difficult because Allah will make yours difficult. Create ease for other people. Help them. Talk to them with respect. See what happens to you. Your family members speak properly to them. Watch your tongue. The way you talk, sometimes what you are saying is right. But the way you are saying it is so horrible. It hurts people. It offends them. They don't want to be in your company. Do you think the angels want to be in your company? Wallahi, they don't. Because the hadith says the angels are affected in the same way that a normal person from, from among the good Muslims would be affected. They'll go away. When you swear, the angels run away from you. Which angels? The angels that are supposed to be hafadha, those to protect you, the angels of mercy and rahma. They are gone. Protection. So calm down. You must have your tongue moist with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. Don't say bad words. You don't need, don't lie. Don't cheat and steal and deceive. Because in that way, your heart will be totally destroyed one day and you won't know whether you're coming or you're going. Another very interesting factor, my brothers and sisters, and I'll end on this note. Istighfar, seek the forgiveness of Allah and Allah will grant, will mend your heart and believe that Allah has forgiven you. That is probably more important than anything else. I tell you why. You see, when you've committed a sin and another sin and many sins and you've sinned for a lifetime and you say, oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, forgive me. Allah says, I only need you to say it once sincerely. You must regret. You must repent. Seek forgiveness. Promise not to do it again. Be genuine and it's forgiven wiped out how many times do you need to do that once one time 70 years of sin is wiped out but guess what happens after that shaitan is not happy right because he lost he lost he'll come to you and say hey your sin was too bad allah didn't forgive you can't be that is a worse sin than the initial one you committed because to lose hope in the mercy of allah is a bigger sin than adultery it's a bigger sin than then consumption of intoxicants. When Allah tells you, La min rahmatillah, Allah says, Ar -Rahman Ar -Rahim. He gives you all his names and qualities. You don't even believe in the names and qualities of Allah. What type of a believer are you? Allah says, -Tawwabur -Rahim. I am the most forgiving. I will forgive you all the time. I'm constantly forgiving. And you're saying, no, 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 ah, that's wrong. You know, I, I, it's, it can't be. You don't forgive. The sin I committed is too big for you. Ha. Who do you think you are? And what do you think has happened? You have just insulted Allah. Believe in Allah. Learn His names. Understand it. What makes you a mu'min is to believe Allah is tawwab, ghaffar. Allah is wadud. He's most loving, most forgiving, most kind. 
That doesn't mean you must go out and say, ah, today we heard Allah is kind, right? Let me commit my sins and see tonight what happens. La ilaha illallah. That's the opposite pole. We're not allowed to do that. But Allah says, Inni lagafarun liman taba wa amana wa amila salih. I will always forgive the one who turns to me, repents and changes his life and does good deeds thereafter. I'll even change the bad into good. So change your life. It's not too late. Don't let shaitan trap you. Like I said, the worst sin is when you believe Allah is not forgiving. When you believe, no, my sin is a bit too big. Yes, you can constantly repeat istighfar. It's healthy to say astaghfirullah. You, if you remember the sin again, ask Allah forgiveness again. Not because I'm doubting Allah, but because I just feel ashamed. You know, when you see a friend of yours and say, hey, look, I'm sorry, man, I did this. Then when you see him again after, hey, I'm sorry, man, you know, it's, it's just forgive me for that one. Then a little while later, you might see him again and say, you know what, I feel so bad that time I did this to you. It wasn't a nice thing. Then he'll tell you, hey, keep quiet. Don't talk about it now. Right? With Allah, Allah loves you to repeat things. Whether it's your dua. You know, when you want something, you ask once, ask again, ask one million times. It's okay. It's an ibadah. Do you know why? Repeat it. Because every time you're saying it, you're acknowledging that Allah is the giver. You're acknowledging Allah is my Lord. I'm asking Allah, oh Allah, grant me. Oh Allah, grant me. The other day I saw a video clip. I don't know if some of you might have seen it. There was a man standing in front of the Kaaba. And he must have had his opportunity to stand in front of the Kaaba. And he was making dua. What do you think he was asking for? Did you see the clip? Fulus, fulus, fulus. La ilaha illallah. Allahumma fulus. La hawla wa la quwata illa. He kept on saying that. It, that dua is not wrong by the way he's asking for money is it wrong to ask for money no it's not wrong but the reality is the way it was looking was hey, hey subhanallah oh, Allah, beep. a guy next to him was saying ask for jannah ask he said hey hang on first i need money here we talk about, we talk about jannah later subhanallah we talk about jannah i need the jannah here first but my brothers my sisters ask for both may allah grant us sustenance may allah give us wealth so that we can use it in a good cause that i mean was very loud mashallah Right? And when you get it, use it in a good cause. Give. Anfiq ya ibn Adam unfiq alayk. In a hadith Qudsi, Allah Almighty is telling us, O oh, son of Adam, spend and I'll spend on you. Give, I'll give you. It's hard to give, right? 50 rands you want to give, 20. Oh, it's very difficult. Allah says, give, give, I'll give you, I'll show you. Give to a good cause. Choose the cause. See. Allahu Akbar. May Allah help us. I'm enjoying myself so much, but I need to end my talk. May Allah forgive all our shortcomings. My brothers and sisters, always there is love coming from the heart to the heart. And I pray that you feel it. It is definitely there. Jazakumullah khair. Aqulu qawli hadha. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala.